Hi everybody, this is Bill. Again, we're Task Warrior Lesson 4. In this lesson, we're going to cover miscellaneous commands and tagging of tasks. So let's get started. All right, let's start off with some quick commands. Task Warrior has a calculator built in. You can go to task count 2 plus 5 and get 7. Also has a built in calendar. If you type task calendar, you can kind of get a nice calendar view. You can export your tasks using task export. Now it just prints it to the screen, so we're going to print it to file. To do that, I'm going to up arrow and then give it the greater than sign, then back up that TXT. Now if I list out the file contents, you can see backup.txt is there. If I cat out backup.txt, you can see it's the same contents there. So let's pull up our tasks from the earlier lessons. You can append information to a task. I'm going to go task 3, append, and then I'm going to put like must. So now if I do a task list, you can see, well, it says bake cake must. So that's not good English. So let's back out that change. So if I undo, I mean task undo, I'm given the option to revert to a previous state and I say yes. So let's try this again. I go task uh, three append. Look, I put for Joe. Maybe we're baking cake for Joe on here. If I do a task list, you can see I can, I'm now baking cake for Joe. Task Warrior also has a prepend command. So if I do task three prepend and then do must, if I do my task list, you can see now it says must bake cake for Joe. If I want to look at my projects, I can go task projects and you can see there I have uh, two tasks in the grocery project and one in the party project. Task log allows you to add a task that's already in completed state. So task log get maybe birthday card. If I pull up my list of tasks, you can see it's not in there because it's not a pending task. It's already been completed. So if I type in task completed, it gives me a list of completed tasks. And then you can see get birthday card has already been completed. One thing you notice that completed tasks have no ID, but they do have the UUID, which is unique to every task. Even in completed state, you can modify tasks. So if I go task and I type in the UUID, and then just like regular task, I say modify, add it to a project. Task timesheet gives you a report of completed tasks. Task Warrior is chock full of reports, and this is where I start to get fuzzy weekly. We're trying to recall them from memory. G history is a good report to run. It shows you added, deleted, and completed tasks. You type task G history. Let's try that again, shall we? Task G history. And there you go. See, it gives you a bar chart for the month of June. We had uh, five tasks, one were completed, and we deleted one of them. If you just type task history, you can see the same information, but in kind of like an Excel spreadsheet kind of format. If you type task burndown.daily, it kind of gives you the task in a linear calendar format. If you do task burndown.weekly, you get the same information, but kind of in a week by week number format. To really see under the hood of Task Warrior, type Task Show. Task Show gives you just about every configuration possible for Task Warrior. Here we can see an alias reference to those uh, reports that we just ran. You can see there's calendar settings, uh, color settings similar to what we saw earlier. So let's quickly talk about active tasks. If I type Task Active, you see I have no tasks that are currently active. So let's pull up our task list. And let's make a task active. We can make tasks, uh, let's say, no, let's do task one. And let's start it. Now if I list out my active tasks, you can see task one by milk is started. Let's start task two as well. So if I put my list of active tasks, you see task one and two have both been started. If I type task show again and scroll up a little bit, you can see task warrior comes with a lot of baked in reports. I'll show you how to modify these reports in an upcoming lesson. Typing task color shows what task warrior has in a way of colors. You can see at the top, you have your basic colors. You can reference them in your configuration file by calling them out on red, blue, green. You can apply some effects by making the colors bold, you add an underline, you can make the color bright, or you can invert the color. And last but not least, you can choose from a color palette, the 15 color color palette, or if you want a color more specific, there's the color cube where you can reference the RGB value for that specific color. Let's talk about Task Warrior and the use of tags. Tags are a very powerful tool 
that you can add to a particular task to either reference them, sort them, identify them, and so on. First, let's pull up a task list. And to start tagging some tasks, let's make a duplicate of task three. So I can type task three, then duplicate. And now I've made a copy as task four. So if I do a task list, you can see must bake cake for Joe is a task three and task four. I'm going to brute force edit task four. I'm going to go down to the description line and say bake cake for not Joe, but let's put Sally. Then I'm going to save it. If I do my task list again, you can see task three is bake cake for Joe. Task four is bake cake for Sally. Now we're going to add tag cities task. If I go task three, modify, then tag colon Joe. Now I go task four, modify, tag colon Sally. Now task list, you can see I have a new column for tags, one for Joe and one for Sally. Now here's where I personally start to get a little confused when I'm trying to modify task. It's really easy to miss something and make a mistake and modify the task incorrectly. So this is why I prefer the brute force method. But here, let me show you. If I want to modify task one and two with tags for both Sally and Joe, I can type this in here. Now, what happened? So I actually modified the task incorrectly. Let's see. If I do a task list, you can see now task one and two, the description has been changed to Joe and Sally. So let's undo that. So if I do task undo, say yes, it reverted that first task back, task one. If I do task undo again, say yes, do a task list, task two has now been reverted back as well. So if I up arrow, perhaps the mistake was putting the space between the colon and the J and Joe. So let's hit enter and see what we get. If I do a task list, now you can see the task one and two were tagged for Joe and the description was changed to Sally. Again, that's not what we want. So let's undo these again. Say yes. We'll do task undo. Oops. Task undo. And yes. So let's do a task list. Okay, everything's back to normal. So usually I do a simple man approach which is I remove a variable. So in this case, I'm going to remove Sally. And then I hit enter. And then if I, here's the problem. If you go back and try to add a tag Sally here now, if I do a task list, it took the Joe tags off and replaced them with Sally. So again, I prefer the brute force method. So I'm going to edit task one and two, basically at the same time or in sequential order. So if I do task one, two, edit, I scroll down to the tags line. I'm going to add Joe. Hit save. It takes me to the second task. Go down to the tags line. Add Joe again. Hit save. If I do a task list, I can see the Joe and Sally tags are on both tasks one and two. Task tags will enable you to do a tag count across all your tasks. Well, I hope that illustrates how uh, complex sometimes Task Warrior can get. There's a lot of options, and it's really hard to commit some of those to memory. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing these screencasts. So lesson five is something I'm going to share with you that I've come up with. I'm going to use Task Warrior and combine it with Bash to kind of help uh, cut down on some of the typing. So look forward to talking to you soon.